Hey guys, this is Mike and I'm back with another Python tutorial for you. Um, this is to continue the series of basic Python and um, we're going to cover this time the subject of loops and how to loop over um, lists and that sort of thing so that we can repeat tasks over and over again. So what do we mean by loops? Well, in Python, there are probably going to be two different types of loops that you'll do. We have something called a while loop and then we have a for loop. And a while loop is basically used to test if a condition is true or false. And if the condition is true, then we continue to loop over certain things. So for instance, um, say we have, um, I don't know, a command line program where we're taking in information and we're asking for instructions from the user. We might be using a while loop to say while true Um, input equals raw input color. So what's your favorite color? And that'll basically present the user with the command line um, Oops, yeah, ended my string the wrong way. Oh, yeah, so we have to do the while loop again. Then we do this again, and then I'll get this end of the string properly. And then we go like that. Um, then we can test for a condition. So if um, input put, uh, oh, yeah remembering we're in Python, not C. Input is equal to blue. Print. Good choice. If uh, input is equal to none. Oh, I don't like colors. Then we can go, whoops. Um, oh yeah. End my line properly. Oh, here we go. This is where it gets complicated, blah, blah, blah. Get the input like so. If uh, the input is blue, uh, say a good choice. If the input is I don't like colors, then we go um, what's the word? Break. And we use break to actually break out of this loop. So, what do I mean by that? Well, this condition is saying while true. Um, so while the condition is true, which is actually always gonna be true because we've actually said, while the condition is always equal to true, it's loop forever. But in this case, we're only doing it until we get the right answer. So if somebody says blue, then it should say print, good choice. If someone it says, uh, I don't like colors, then we use this break to then break this loop-in situation. So with a while condition, you're more likely to want to break things. With a for loop, later on you'll see that's not necessarily the case because for loops have a, have a habit of just basically running for however many times you tell them to. While loops, you have this facility to test if something's true. So um let's just see if we can do that so we've run the we're inside the while loop and it says what's your favorite color and we go blue it says good choice um if we say i don't like colors whoops then it'll go okay so that's the end of the loop. 
it exited. However, um, if we wanted to change that while choice to something like uh, not true, but while um, let's de just declare input before we go any further. Input equals an empty string for now. So if we go back and say while input is not equal to red, and we go back and fill in the rest of our code so we can say um, get the color and if the input is blue, print good choice. If the input was, uh, I don't like colors, then this time I'm going to say print. I'm sorry, I won't ask again. Like that. And then we'll put our break in. Okay. So if we run this, what's your favorite color? Um, it is uh, blue. So that tests our first if. Yeah. Um, if we type in the word red here, because our test up here is saying, while input, input is not equal to red, we'd actually cause this condition to be true. Of, no, it will cause it to be false. If we type in the word red here, we should expect that to exit out. So let's test that happens. And it does. So that condition is always tested every time you loop through. And that's um, pretty useful, but it's not the most ideal way to do a loop. The most ideal way to do a loop most of the time um, is with the for um, loop situation. So what does a for loop do? Um, a loop, a for loop will go through um, a list of things that you pass it and take every item out of that list or that dictionary or that um, tuple. It will take out each item and perform something until the end of that list. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, if you've been looking at for loops before in the code, you'll see something like uh, for i in uh, range 10. Then go print, I don't know, let's just print out what i is. Okay, and that should print out 0 to 9. So we have for i, which is a variable name, which can be anything, so it could be uh, cheese in range 10 and then all we would do is change the uh, the name of the variable that we use within the for loop to identify it as this particular variable so that can be any name you like and it still works but when we say that we iterate over lists of things we we actually in the process of creating that limp that li that that loop rather um, we use the range function now range if you run that on its own look what it gives you it's a list a list of numbers from zero to nine because we said range to ten so that means from zero through to nine which is just below ten if we then extend that and say uh, in the case of this this list that we've supplied it, that it goes through and takes out every individual in element of that. We can see on the first iteration, it came out with zero. The next time around, it came out with one, as you can see there, printed it out, and so on and so forth. So that's kind of okay if you just want to loop through things and you want to um, to count them. But... Say you had a list of words instead. So let's create a quick list of words. Uh, words equals um, 
cheese, ham, eggs, and finally uh, bacon. Okay, so we've got some words like that. We can also use that list to iterate in our for loop. So for word in words, remember remembering that this little section, the bit after the in bit, uh, can take a list or even a dictionary, and we'll go on to that in a second. Um, take that and it'll take out every individual item. So we say print word. Three guesses what it's going to do. There you go. So it took out everything in that list. Now, the question is, if we wanted to then count these, uh, these words, what would we do? Well, we can then use something called enumerate, which is a function that takes a list and then adds an index number to it. Now, what do we mean by that? Well, let's demonstrate it rather than, uh, than me trying to fuddle along and explain it to you. So we have four, but this time, instead of just putting the word or the, the variable name there, we're gonna actually say uh, index and then the word in enumerate words. And what that'll do is it'll go through each item in the list. It'll pull out the index or the number it is in the list or its position. So for, for cheese, that should come out as zero. For ham, that should come out as one. And eggs, that should come out as two. And three for bacon. So it'll push out the number that it is in the list or its index and also the word as a second value. So you've got two sections that can be unpacked from this enumerate uh, function. And then what we'll do is we'll go print i comma, oh sorry, index word. And that should then print out the number and also the word next to it. So here goes. So if we do have a list of items that are not really numbers um, and we want to be able to pull out them out as well as the, the position they are in the list, then enumerates the way forward with that. So we can then go on to do things like um, tuples. And tuples basically will work exactly the same way um, as our words. The only difference we're using here is um, we create an immutable list. So once this list is changed, it can't be, uh, once this list is created, it can't be changed. So then if we go back and we do the whole words and just print the word, works exactly the same. The only difference is that we've passed in a slightly different data type and the the difference in the data type is a list can be changed and a, a tuple can't. So for a dictionary, we basically create a dictionary um, and for this example, I'm gonna use person's details. Um, and we have a name, a gender and a male, uh, sorry, an age um, key for each of these. So if we do uh, persons, details and do keys we've got these if we do uh, values we have this however if we then go and loop over this dictionary we can use uh, a another function that comes with a dictionary called items now what would that do well let's say uh, for key and value in um, persons details dot items. We then go print a key, then uh, a value as well. And that 
will basically go through and like our um, enumerate function, it will unpack whatever items generates into a key and a value pair. So what is what does person items or person details items actually generate? It gives you a list, a list of tuples. So basically what it does is it goes through each one of these uh, items inside the list and pulls them out. And using Python's unpacking mechanism, it will then take each one of these and assign them to the key and the value pair for that time around in the loop. And that's basically how we can then use the values from there to be printed out into this list. So you can then unpack details from dictionaries. Now, this is quite handy if you're doing things like printing out somebody's details on a page, for instance, if you, if you're, especially when you're doing web development, if you want to unpack these details and make it a sensible way of doing that. So you can have lines like key value or, uh, you know, if it's name and address, you could unpack them into, into nice, sensibly named variable names. Then that's how you would do it. So that's the end of this tutorial. I hope that it was informative and that you learned something from that. And if you did, then please click the like button. And if you want to know more about this uh, to the tutorials in this series, then uh, click the subscribe button and you'll get a notification as soon as a new one appears. Thanks for watching.